Hello again everyone, hope everyone's well. I collect quite a few different odd consoles and computers and with that comes a problem which I'm sure a lot of you have and that is trying to get software and games for the different systems that we own. Either it can take up too much space or with some of them um, it's just the prices of some of the games or even just trying to track some down it's quite difficult um, so there are different ways that we could go around that you can collect the games I am trying at the moment to not go a little bit here a little bit there I'm trying to focus on GameCube and my Spectrum games uh, it's just just ones I enjoy um, so for the others you can either get Raspberry Pi that's uh, a really good way to actually to enjoy the games. Although then you don't play it on the real hardware. It's um, you can get the pads, but some somehow it just it loses a bit of its charm. Um, I've been playing Amiga on this Spectrum, Commodore sixty four, things like that, and they run really well on here. Uh, and some of the systems that I just wouldn't be able to afford, like the uh, Turbo Graphics and things like that, or the uh, Neo Geo. Um, so it's a really good way to go. I've also got this here for my handheld, which again is a Raspberry Pi, uh, and it's the G Pi case, which if you've never held one of these in your hand, if it, it's so well made, it really is. The screen is nice, the sounds good. It uh, because it's a, a Pi Zero inside, it does struggle with some of the uh, the home consoles. So I mostly mostly treat this as uh, Game Boy. Game Gear, uh, uh, you know, things like that. Proper handheld. So this is my Raspberry Pi handheld system. Very nice thing to have. But what if you want to play the real games, or play the games on the real hardware? So there are a lot of solutions out there, and I'd like to go for a couple that I have and have picked up along the way, which I really, really like. Uh, there's different ways you can go. Uh, to begin with, I'm going to start off with quite a, uh, a simple one which if you're getting into collecting or just want to play the games I would recommend go down this route and that's the multi cards uh, I've got this one here which is a Super Nintendo 101 cart yeah it's the American cart but I play this on my um, my clone Super Nintendo so it takes most you can get this as a PAL version as well that will fit in but if, if I'm going down like the the price wise it's got sunset riders on it it's got turtles in time it's got castlevania uh castlevania x as well um so if you were trying to find these games the price you'd be paying yeah it granted some people liked that some people really like to have the real, the real games real boxes everything else but not everyone can afford it so a going down this route i think is quite good for just your average gamer the same again with the uh the nes uh, Castlevania, all the Mega Man games and stuff like that on there, which if you price them up individually, they're really expensive. Uh, I find that these actually work really well. They've got no doubles on there. Um, they, I've never had any trouble with them working in any of my systems. So yeah, for the average gamer, they're about 20, 25 quid on eBay. You can get various different ones. It's a nice way to go. Um, but then you've got your other ones, which I, I've had to go down the, the this route because when I discovered this system at the Revival two years ago, I was just blown away and had to get one. And the, the system itself is quite pricey. And then I looked into the games and that was like, wow. Um, and that's the Vectrex. So I think this one's about 30 quid. I can't exactly remember. But this is uh, 72 games in one. Multicart for the Vectrex. I mean, I know you can. You know, people say you'll need to get the overlays and things like that, but I, I love just having this plug and play. That is pretty much my collection for the Vectrex done, uh, and, and I'm more than happy to just have this. Uh, and then uh, a bit of an odd one because it's just to get all of these games to get Pang for this. I looked on eBay the other day, and a, a complete box version of Pang for this system was going for two hundred and fifty pound. My wife would just kick me out of the house. Uh, and this is for the um, the GX4000. It also works for the um, CPC Plus model as well. Which I think it looks better in that. Because when you put it into the actual... Um, into the system. As you can see it sticks out really quite far. But with the um, 
with the plus model it goes in the side you've got your dip switches on the side here on the top and everything else uh and it's got all the it's got the well it's got 32 games that was pretty much all the games made for the um for the gx 4000 there are i think there's two there's um there's a racing game and there's a gas game which nobody actually even know exists um so yeah that's I'm very happy to just have that because to get the um, GX4000 games uh, is just absolutely extortionate. It really is. So I can enjoy the games and I don't have to get divorced. <laughs> so, yeah, that's uh, that's your multi -carts. A really nice and fun way to go if you just want to play the games. Uh, and similarly again, you can go the EverDrive. A little bit more expensive, uh, you can get an EverDrive now for, for most systems, but I only have the one for the Super, Nint Super Nintendo, for the Master System and Mega Drive, because there's both of these on here. So you can plug that in, you go through the menu, uh, scroll down to what you need to play, click it, play. It's just like the real cartridges in the system. I see no difference in having this to having like all the box games. I did have quite a large collection at the time, but... Uh, again, space, I needed to sell them. I was paying for something else, so I'm very sorry, but my, in my entire Sega collection pretty much went apart from two or three games. So that's a really good one to have. Uh, and Everdrive again as well is for the, the Game Boy and the, um, and the DS. Really cheap to pick these up. This is really quite an old model. There's, there's a lot of newer ones here. But yeah, load your games onto an SD, SD card. Get my words out. And yeah, you're away you go. Really nice way to go. Right, then you've got your slightly more niche market. So uh, this one here is the Div MNC Future. As you can see, style-wise and everything else, this is for the for the Spectrum. Uh, and yeah, again, you load all your games in here. Plug this straight into the back of your Spectrum. It works on all models that I've found. Uh, you've got your uh, slot at the back so you can use your joystick as well. So you haven't got to plug in an extra uh, like Kempton joystick adapter or stuff like that. Uh, scroll down your menu, click your game, press play and it just loads instantly. And I still love loading games from tape. Uh, I'll always love doing that. But for the convenience, this is a really nice thing to, to have. And I know that they've made updated models of these now. So, you know, depends what you're looking for, looking to do. And again, I did speak about this one before. This is also the ZX band for the ZX81. Similar thing, you know, SD card in the side, go for your menus. To actually be able to just plug in the actual computers and load games instantly is a really nice, uh, really nice thing to do. Uh, and then we have the Div FMC Future. No, it's not, because that's the Div FMC Future. SD to YEC. That's what I meant to say. Uh, and this is for your Commodores. This here will work on your uh, Plus 4, C16, Vic 20, Commodore 64, and your 128. So this really does, you plug it in the back and it just emulates the floppy disk drive. Unlike these, which will load straight away, this will still load at the same speed that the original floppy disk used to load. And if you've ever had a Commodore 64, you know that's not very fast. So yeah, that's a, that's a couple of them. Uh, so they're the, the ones I've got with the SD cards. And now you're going more towards um, your EverDrive. No, yeah, EverDrive's. Uh, and I've got a really nice one here, which I just it took me a while to get hold of this one. But this is the Dragon Drive. So you put all your games into onto a memory stick, plug it in there, comes up on the display here, uh, and you scroll through what game you want to do, and then you just load it. It's like you're loading a normal game on the Dragon 32. Uh, to, to, I found the Dragon quite a difficult thing to to load take games and things on it may just be me it may just be my computer but this was an absolute godsend when it came for i've enjoyed so many games on the dragon because of that and again with the uh, ever drives you can do them various systems i have one here on the um the amstrad cpc 
and even my Atari ST. So to actually be able to use the real um, the real computers is a really nice thing because you just again with the with the same with this you plug in your memory stick all the games are loaded on there and you just away you go. Uh, I I also have it on the the Amiga as well but I didn't bring that with me. Uh, WHD load is another good one to have on the Amiga because you you put everything into an SD card inside and you scroll through the menus on the screen just click your games and off you go. I've also recently, very recently, just been given this one, which is the Atari 400 Atari Maxi Drive. It's a flash cartridge, and this flash cartridge is you you take it out, you plug it into into uh, an external drive, flash on what games you want on, and then that's it. They're just on there, and it's a really 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 nice thing to have. This one. I, I'm so happy to have because I have found it really hard to get Atari 400 and 800 games. I really have. I've got a, a handful of them, but they, they prop up so rarely that having this and being able to enjoy these games is a really nice thing to have. Um, the Atari, If you've never played the Atari 400 or 800, they have some really, really, really nice um, arcade ports. So yeah, that was just going for a couple of different options that I have or I use um, to enjoy older systems or just enjoy the real hardware. Um, what devices have you got? You know, what, what do you prefer to use? Do you, would you only ever go for a real game or would you be quite happy to play the original hardware but with, you know, an SD card? So, yeah, uh, comment below. Be interested to see what what different ways people collect and different ways people enjoy games and uh yeah everyone stay safe and again thanks for watching